Minister Ananda Sangari, welcome back to Power Play. Thanks for make, take, taking the time with us. Great to be here on National Indigenous Peoples Day, Mike. Yeah, and you are there in Nova Scotia, where your government just announced $16 million per year for education infrastructure to the Mi'kmaq Kinemanawe, uh, plus $125 million for proposed settlement agreement. How important are those steps to be taken today? These are critical steps, um, you know, all across Canada. We've uh, been uh, ensuring that, first of all, past harms are corrected. Um, you know, we cannot bring back the past, but we can definitely do uh, the right thing in terms of redressing it. Uh, so the $125 million in terms of the settlement uh, represents, you know, a, a, almost a 45-year uh, a, a battle uh, by the community and leadership uh, that has uh, been persistent in ensuring that their rights uh, are, are uh, recognized by Canada. And, and today uh, we were able to, to sign uh, that agreement. Um, with the Mi'kmaq, um, broadly in Nova Scotia, the um, MK agreement, uh, education sectoral agreement, uh, is critical. Education is at the core uh, of some of the challenges we have had with Indigenous people, especially with residential schools and so on. Um, so this agreement uh, confirms what uh, we've been doing since uh, the 1990s, uh, ensuring that there's self-determination over education for the Mi'kmaq in Nova Scotia. Um, just by way of uh, reference, over 90% uh, of kids who are in the school system uh, who are Mi'kmaq uh, within the schools um, graduate. It is higher than, in fact, the provincial averages. Um, it is remarkable what happens when uh, people have control over their lives and over their systems. And this includes uh, the investments we're making, which, which in fact totals $125 million over five years. Um, and $60 million is the additional annual um, uh, amount that's, that's going towards education. Uh, essentially uh, enables communities to invest in languages, invest in infrastructure, invest in their teachers. You know, we were here with the Prime Minister today and one of the teachers received the Prime Minister's Teaching Award, the first Mi'kmaq teacher to receive that. So we have, uh, we are making progress uh, here and, and I think this is a reaffirmation uh, that we need to continuously invest uh, in, in education uh, as well as in communities. Yeah, and we'll talk a bit uh, about that a little later on, but there have been some reports that your government plans to publicly apologize for the discrimination faced by First Nations children and their families because of the federal government's child welfare policies. Can you confirm that that is going to happen? Look, you know, we, we have to do some work around it. We, we definitely are committed to, um, in the broader uh, sense, ensure that uh, we, we take accountability uh, for past actions where the federal government has failed in its duties. Um, we have to um, consult, obviously, with uh, not just the, the Assembly of First Nations, but others who are part of, of the, the broader um, conversations around child welfare. So we are looking forward to those engagements and discussions. But in principle, I think our government is very much focused on uh, on acknowledging past harms and, and ensuring that that we we apologize and we are sorry for uh, what's happened on, on a range of issues. And, and we've already done that with residential schools, for example. So you're saying that official apology will be happening and will it be happening in Parliament? Well, I think that the nature and scope of it needs to be uh, co-developed with Indigenous people, uh, and, and that's the work that we still need to do before we finalize how um, and, and what venue and, and, and how the apology takes place. Okay, on a day like today, we like to reflect back on the progress that has been made, but also what is to come. And there is a sense from Indigenous First Nations and Métis groups that your government is making slower progress than at the start of the Liberal mandate in 2015. How do you respond to that criticism? I think the uh, the way I would respond is, uh, you know, there's two ways to 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 look at this. You know, one is um, from an investment perspective, uh, our investments in in Indigenous communities have uh, um, increased uh, triple uh, that. Uh, of when we took office. Uh, we have close to $160 billion in investments over the last uh, nine years. Just this year alone in Budget 2024, we have investments of, of uh, $32 billion that's going towards uh, Indigenous communities. Um, look, the, the pace of progress is frustrating, and, and I fully recognize that when we can you know, look at uh, specific issues where uh, you know we may not have uh, fully um, uh, uh, fulfilled all of the things that we need to do. But when we need to do 
things, not just for expediency, but also we need to do it right. So I can give you an example. Um, call to action um, 43 and 44 is about the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. So that is part of uh, the PRC calls to action. Uh, one, one of those uh, 43 calls for us to adopt and implement uh, the UN Declaration. We adopted in 2017, we brought into legislation in 2021, uh, we brought the action plan in 2023, uh, which essentially is a review of laws and our practices. Now we have uh, delivered just a day or two ago uh, an annual report um, uh, on the action plan, um, and we're continuously uh, trying to reach those targets. But these are going to take generations, um, Mike. This is not something that we can do overnight, especially when we do it in the right way um, with Indigenous people as partners um, and not as adversaries. And, and when we try to co-develop and work uh, on these processes, it, it does take time. Uh, but I am absolutely confident that we're on the right track. Um, since 2015, we have changed the trajectory um, in terms of closing the gap, um, ensuring that there's long-term um, uh, self-determination over many aspects of people's lives, including the water legislation that's before the House right now, including C-92, which was uh, passed and, and reaffirmed uh, as, as something we could do by the Supreme Court, um, as well as implementation of UNGRIP. So I'm I'm very positive that we're in the right direction. But I also share the frustration of, of, of the um, of the delays sometimes or, or, or the, the speed at which uh, this is moving forward. Yeah, and I take your point that sometimes some of these changes will take generations, but do you think then that your government, when coming in in 2015, set expectations way too high because there were set certain deadlines, like eliminating all uh, water crises on uh, Indigenous and First Nations territories? You, you know, originally that deadline was for 2021, and, and we know now that that didn't happen. So did your government promise too much too quickly and not properly temper expectations because right now you're saying that some of these things are, are going to take generations. Well, look, we're an ambitious government when it comes to reconciliation. It is the number one issue for the prime minister. This is the number one relationship for the prime minister uh, and our government, and it's a whole of government approach. So when we look at something like water, clean water, it's a basic right. Uh, every um, person should have a right to water. Um, uh, we have lifted over 144 boil water advisories in communities. Um, that is uh, that is a remarkable number, but we still have 30 more communities that are on boil water advisories. And for each and every one of them, we have a plan. Um, one of the challenges with water over the years is that it was an Ottawa-driven approach where Ottawa would you know, order 10 systems and deliver it to 10 communities without the training, the support, uh, or even the wishes of the community. But now the way we're doing it is a self-determined approach, one where uh, First Nations communities actually um, look at their design, look look to look at the procurement and train uh, local members to be able to uh, to, to sustain uh, the, the systems that they're putting in place. Um, of course, this is a source of frustration for us. However, I do believe that progress is being made and, and we will uh, ensure that clean water will be in every community. They make no mistake. Um, C-61 is a piece of legislation that Minister Haidu um, introduced. It's now before uh, the committee. Um, it is, is a critical piece of legislation that looks at water, not just from the, the communities that don't have water, but a longer term view of custodianship of water uh, by Indigenous people. Uh, and, and that's, uh, I believe, a, a, again, a longer term piece that is embedded into the conversation about water. Minister, we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask you, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal is getting ready to hear another non-compliance motion on Jordan's principle because of serious ongoing harms. Advocacy groups are wondering, if your government is really committed to reconciliation, uh, then why does Canada continue to discriminate against First Nations children? They, that is their words. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, let me be very clear. Um, there is still work to do uh, on a range of issues uh, relating to uh, child welfare, for example, but we are on the right track. 
if you look at uh, the decision um, uh, by uh, by the government to um, you know essentially invest over forty billion dollars uh, towards uh, designing and developing new child welfare systems, that is a significant amount of investments, and that is unprecedented in Canadian history. So we're making um, enormous efforts towards addressing uh, past harms, but not just addressing it, but also to say the systems need to change, and we're working towards establishing and developing new systems that are driven and controlled by uh, Indigenous people. And that is something that we cannot go backwards on. Um, look, on, a, on, a, on any day, there are a number of litigation that's outstanding um, you know, with the government, and, and we're working through um, through them, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I do as, as Minister of Canada Indigenous Relations is to work through them and to ensure that, that we have uh, fair settlements that are outside of the court system. And we will continue to engage in a manner that is um, trauma-informed and that doesn't re-traumatize families and individuals and children uh, who've gone through very difficult times.